Hello, this is DRI Reptiles. Today's video is about pit tagging turtles. Specifically, this is the first introduction video to a two-part series. Today's video will be going through uh, these packets, kind of, and showing you how to obtain pit tags and what pit tags are and why I'm pit tagging my turtles. And very specifically, this is more geared towards U.S. people and the laws in Ohio, which is the state I live in, in the U.S., and why I have to have pit tags to keep some of my turtles and that they're, they're native and stuff. So if you're in the U.S., this is more geared towards you. And if you're in Ohio, then, like, this is very geared towards you because it's actually, like, helpful. But that's kind of the point of this video. The second video in the series, I'm not entirely sure when that will come out, will show this actual process and I could not find this anywhere on YouTube or like online. The only thing is like papers and stuff. So this will show you actual video of it being done and the step-by-step -step process and today I'll walk you through it. In the other video I'll actually show the process visually because like I said I couldn't find that anywhere. So I hope that you enjoy. Another thing I'd like to mention is that I did this like a good couple months ago, so I know I was successful in doing it, but also I look different in this other footage. So just keep in mind that I'm going to be going back and forth like months in time. Okay, so I want to explain this in a way that makes sense, but the information isn't as relevant to me as it was when I originally recorded this video, but I also know more information now than I did then. So I wanna make sure you guys understand everything. So first of all, I make videos on YouTube about the animals that I take in. I've never bought in a turtle. All the turtles that I get, I just take in from people that no longer want them. I don't have any that I've taken from the wild or anything like that. But six of my turtles are native species. Four of them are rated, rated sliders, which are naturalized in Ohio. And then two of them are Wichita map turtles, which are properly native. Anyway, I need a permit to keep all of these species of turtles. I was informed about this by a fellow turtle keeper in Ohio. He made me aware of this through the comment section and informed me that this was something that I needed to do. So I started off by going to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources website, the, the Ohio Division of Wildlife. And what I did is I contacted the division. I went to contact the Ohio Division of Wildlife. I went down to Wildlife Customer Service and I was like, hey, I have these six turtles. I've had these for many months and I need to get a permit for them. And I contacted them because if you go to the permits, what I wanted was, if I can find it, the wildlife propagation uh, non-commercial permit. And what it says here is that the Ohio Division of Wildlife should be contacted within 10 days after taking possession of uh, any native animal. And this concerned me. So I contacted the division. They said, like, that's fine. Like, it, it, it's fine. Just, like, make sure you get it. And it's it's really not that big of a deal. So you don't actually have to contact anybody. I In my original explanation of this, I made it seem like you did. You really don't. So here's what the non-commercial propagating license is. It costs $25 yearly to renew. And it's if you want to legally keep native reptiles, amphibians, game birds, game quadrupeds, or fair fur-bearing animals. Now, not all of those need to be pit tagged. The pit tags are only needed for snakes and turtles. So a unique passive integrated transponder, a pit tag, P-I-T tag, must be implanted under the skin of all live native snakes and turtles uh, for you to properly own them. Now, also in my original explanation of this, I did not make it seem like you could buy said things, but you can. So the difficult process that I went through is that I didn't read enough online and I just contacted people and I feel bad for them because they didn't need to deal with me, but they did. 
And basically the wildlife officer pointed me in the direction of somebody to um, buy pit tags. So instead of just going through and doing this ordering form, which uh, is like pretty simple and like you just like mail this in, I believe, and then they'll mail you the pit tags. I bought five pit tags because one of my turtles was and still is under four inches. Now, the way that it works with turtles is that you must have one of these pit tags in them if they're over four inches. If they're under four inches, you just wait because they're basically too small to reasonably inject a, a pit tag into them. And these pit tags need to be able to be read by the Avid Mini Tracker. And the pit tags that they'll send you are obviously the ones that will work. They're $10 a piece, so it was $50 for that. And basically how the system works is that you need to go and apply for the permit. You need to create an account if you don't have an account. I mean, I have an account now, but I didn't. So I had to create an account and then I applied for the permit. And then I need to go through and I need to pit, pit tag the turtles. And once I pit tag the turtles, the wildlife officer in your area will come and inspect your facility or your home or whatever. And he will use the tracker or the reader to show that like the paper that matches up with the specific pit tag is in the proper animal and that paper has the information on it and that you have what you said you had in filling out the application and that everything lines up and you're doing a good job and you should be able to get the permit. After that, I believe he sent me an email that's like, hey, you can buy the permit now and like here's the link to do that. And then I bought the permit and I had to renew it like two months later because that's when you renew them. Not every two months, but just like in March or something like that. So I'll have to renew it again come whenever that time is. I'm sure I'll get an email and that's the deal. So you can also get a wild animal propagation commercial permit. The difference is, and I didn't realize this originally, it's a little bit more expensive. It's $40, but this is so you can then sell, or you can breed, but in both permits, you can breed the animals unless they're deer. Deer is like a separate thing, but you can breed the animals and you can sell them. And the non-commercial, you cannot sell them or you know do anything like that. I believe you can give them away but you cannot sell or trade or, or barter native animals with the non-commercial permit. I'm not in the business of selling any native animals, so I just pay for the non-commercial and that's fine. But if I needed to sell them or get rid of them somehow or try to make it a profitable thing, then I would get the commercial propagation. Permit. Besides the turtles, I've also kept native game birds, and that's those were only like I only kept them temporarily because we just raised them for a season, and that doesn't require anything to do with pit tags. It's only snakes and turtles. So that's everything you need to know about how to obtain these things and kind of why. I'm doing all of this. Now I am going to kind of finish my story and also go through these papers. Now to go along with the story, I was in contact with this lady that worked at the wildlife center and she's the one who sent me the pit tags. I had to mail her money and then she sent them. Like I said, I didn't do the form because I didn't know there was a form. She also sent me these packets. I cannot find them online. So I'm going to scan them and leave the links in the description so you can look at them. But I'm also going to go and I'll show you, walk you through them uh, just so you can kind of know what's going on. But back to the story, I kind of want to show you what the pit tag looked like when they came in. So he pointed me in the direction of somebody who could actually sell them to me uh, that works for the, the wildlife uh, department. And then I got sent pit tags in the mail. So I got five. I said I have six. That's because one is under four inches. These things are pretty decent sized needles. So I will wait until that one gets over uh, size. And then they also sent me these. I guess these are going to be like my certificates. So the, they say the pit tag number. So you can know which pit tag, which pit tag number goes to which animal. So it has like animal name, 
date, your name, probably like a bunch of different information. And the bank has stuff about if you want to rehome the animal or something like that. So then you can say you want to give it to somebody. So this isn't entirely clear, but with the non-commercial propagating permit, I believe that you can transfer the animal via like giving it to somebody. And with, when doing that, you would fill out the back of this certificate to kind of like get, you know, fill it out and then they could have it. And that's how that could be transferred. But with the commercial propagating permit, which I do not have, you would just, I mean, if you sold the animal, then you would also do this whole thing. I don't entirely know how that process works though, because they are aware of which animals I have and their like microchip numbers and everything. So I don't know how I would notify them. Like I have one less animal and like somebody else now has an animal and then they're getting their permit. So I don't know how exactly the logistics of all that works, but I'm not really gonna worry about it because I don't have any animals that I plan on giving to anybody and I don't have a commercial propagating permit so I can't sell any of my native species. So I'm not gonna worry about it and I'm unfortunately not entirely sure how all of that works. And then I got sent these papers, there's two packets on how to like do this. So I'm gonna read through these. I've read some stuff, but like every single place for the very limited amount of information there is, there's so many different ways to pit tag a turtle, but I wanna read through all of this to understand everything and make sure I'm gonna do this correctly. I have given shots to turtles before doing the pit tag injection and that went pretty well. So I was like somewhat experienced, but I still wanted to make sure I was very knowledgeable on the subject before I did anything. And I'm glad I did. And that's why I'm attaching these to the description so you can go through them as well. So now I'm going to walk you through what I found uh, most important while going through these packets and I'll kind of put them up on the screen as I'm talking about them so you can kind of walk through it if you don't want to read through it yourself and you can learn what you need to know and I'll show you what I learned from them. And I think this paper is about avid pit tag specifically and then this one's from the the wildlife division but it, it's it requires that all captive snakes with a, a snout to vent length, so not the entire length of the snake, but just from the, the snout of it to its cloaca, with the snout to vent length greater than 18 inches, and then captive turtles with a carapace of four inches or longer. So I have a caliper that I've been measuring with my turtles, so I know that it's a straight line carapace length of four inches or more. And then it's the, the district wildlife offices, at least in Ohio. So the Division of Wildlife has made available the purchase of AVID pit tags uh, at each of our five district wildlife offices. And then it explains what a pit tag is. So it says pit tag is an acronym for passive integrated transponder. A pit tag is a small durable microchip approximately the size of a grain of rice so very small. And when a handheld scanner is waved over the pit tag, the wand generates a low energy radio signal that energizes the pit tag to transmit its unique number. So this is how they identify animals in general that are captive, because as it says up at the top, it's like reptiles look very similar. So uh, this is the best way they've found to make sure this is done, which did, I think it's a pretty good idea as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so from this paper, it's, they seem pretty confident that pit tags can be implemented by the average person. But of course, if you don't feel confident doing this, then I don't recommend it. Uh, you can have a veterinarian. So I know that uh, Shelled Reptiles, I, I've talked to him about this before because he has a, a couple turtles that are pit tagged. He keeps a lot of native turtles. and. He had a veterinarian do it. I don't really see a reason to go to the veterinarian. I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to do this, but I'm going to continue reading because then it takes the step-by-step -step to do it to a snake and then to do it to a turtle. I might read through both just because I think it'd be interesting, but I believe it addresses how to deal with like bleeding or whatever, which is what I'm concerned with. I want to make sure that the, the wound or whatever is kind of closed up 
before I put the turtle back in the tank and everything, or however that works, to make sure that this is not gonna just drop out of the turtle. I need to get liquid bandage because it says, if any bleeding occurs, it may be necessary to apply a drop of liquid bandage. Allow the liquid bandage to dry before placing the animal in any type of bedding material. Use clean paper towels for bedding until the liquid bandage dries. Don't be alarmed if there's bleeding. Turtles, unlike birds and mammals, can lose significant amounts of blood with no ill effects. And it says the exact same thing for snakes. So I'm assuming by type any type of bedding material, it just means like don't put them back in the water after applying liquid bandage. You need to wait for it to dry, however long it dries, I'm not sure. I'm gonna wait until I get that just in case because I'm doing five turtles and if any of them bleed, I don't wanna have to like freak out or whatever and I don't want any affection or infections or anything like that. And then it goes on to talk about papers, which I, I've already read one of them. Like all of them are about snakes, but then one's about turtles and I already found it. And I'll link that in the description. So this paper talks more in depth about amphibians as well as other reptiles other than just turtles and snakes. But I don't think I'm gonna have to pit tag any lizards. I don't think that's very common, especially because there's no, I mean, there's native lizards, but they're not bred in captivity in Ohio. And then in other places, generally the native lizards are just not bred in captivity. So you, you can't really get them in a legal manner anyway. And then the same thing is kind of true for salamanders and frogs and toads. And I'm not gonna have to pit tag an alligator anytime soon. So that's not overly important, but it does get into snakes and turtles. So that paper or this one is kind of more the, the Avid paper. So the, the brand of the pit tags, but this one is kind of the one that was more helpful to me. So like I said, or like I keep saying, both of those will be down in the description. Also, some scientific papers will be linked down in the description so you can uh, read through those. I will make sure I'm prepared to have everything to pit tag the turtles. I've, I've already done this, obviously, but I needed to get liquid bandage was the main thing that I didn't have. And then I already had like alcohol and that's that's kind of it to make sure I'm doing it correctly. And then I will have a future video on actually the whole process visually. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I kind of worked hard in trying to make it properly educational. So I really hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did, like it down below. If you have any comments or, concern, or concerns, put them down in the comments below. And please stay tuned for the next video because if this is something that interests you and you wanna learn about, that one's gonna be so much more like visually pleasing and everything in like learning and stuff. So much more actually hands on and what's going on. So I hope you uh, stay tuned to check that out and have a great day.